because as we get deeper and deeper into it, uh, it's going to be it's going to be uh, uh, something. I mean, we're going to get into some good stuff. Praise God. And I told you from the very beginning. I told you from the very beginning that, uh, Amen. That it's the ABCs of faith. Praise God. And then we're going to get deeper. Why? We need to lay. We need to lay some milk in. Uh, some, some, some milk out there for you first. Praise God. And uh, I love it because God's reminding us back how simple faith is because we, as we have matured in the Lord, you know, I use that word mature in the Lord, as, and many of us have. And as we have begun to mature in the Lord, we forget about the basics. You know, and the Lord told Brother Copeland to go back to the basics of faith. So much basic that he went back to when he first learned about faith. So it's some it's something it's something good when Brother Copeland goes all the way back to the basics of faith when he first learned about faith and they're using the scriptures that the Lord gave him in glory when they first started out and they're using scriptures uh, that God had given them as far as uh, uh, through Doctor Hagen when Doctor Hagen was teaching uh, the foundation of the faith so it may start out you may be saying to yourself I already know that and and, and all that um, but but go back. You know what, we, we, we've listened, as we were listening to the, the Mercy Over Judgment this morning, I can't tell you how many times Karen and I have heard those messages. You know what, but we keep learning just again this morning, I was like, wow. You know, heard something else new again, praise God. Can I tell you something, Winston? Y'all remember, y'all remember when uh, Dr., uh, well, well, I can call him Dr., I guess, but y'all remember whenever, uh, when uh, Pastor James Gardner was teaching on the glove, amen? You know how much revelation's in that thing? No. He can go back again. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. And that was just the, that was the first time we ever heard him preach. Then he's got the second message after that. I mean, when he came back and preached again, praise God. And uh, just some awesome, just some awesome stuff. Very basic. And uh, but I find out on faith, I find out so much. Uh, when I go back and, 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 I'm, and I'm looking at, you know, at the milk, I call it the milk of faith, you know, the very start of faith, uh, I'm finding out so much. I'm like, man, and that's what he's wanting us to do is go back because we have forgotten. That's what the Lord told Brother Cook when he goes, my people's, I guess in a way of paraphrasing it is, you know, they're too big for their britches now. They think they know it all. <laughs> and we have got forgotten the very basic things like faith. How do we get the things that we need? How, how do we believe God for things? Amen? How do we believe God? You have people all the time go, how do I believe that? And the only faith that you've got, as we said in the times past, is what Jesus said. He's given every man the measure of faith. And then you have got to begin to build. He ain't going to give you no more faith. What he's given you, he's given you. <laughs> all right? Every one of us got that same. Every, just, Imagine a BB. Every one of us got a BB of faith. Okay? So we can begin to, to, to grow off of that. So I can't say somebody, now somebody may be, may be, and they are, of course, like Brother Kofel and all these guys, they're more mature in the faith. Why? They've been building on their faith over all these years. Amen? And so people can be more mature in their faith, but they start out with the same amount of faith as we did, or we have right now, is that I call it a BB. Starting out with a BB, and it's even smaller than that if you look at the mustard seeds. <laughs> the mustard seeds even smaller than that. But he gave you that same faith today. Praise God. I found something very interesting before I get into my other stuff. I was, I was reading this the other day, and I was going back over it again. Because we're talking about, as we're talking about faith growing, uh, Oh, over in uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, and I think I read this last week, 2 Thessalonians uh, 1 3 says this. He says, uh, Paul writes to the Thessalonian church, and he says, uh, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. So we can come a place in our life where our faith begins to grow exceedingly. And I believe the, the, the days that we're living in now, especially these last days that we're, we're living in now, 
Our faith, you know, I told you that it was it was prophesied that you know what what took uh, you know what took days is going to take you know or what took months is now going to take days and what took days is going to take you know hours and what took hours is now going to take minutes and what took minutes is going to take seconds. Amen. That we're living in that faith. We're, we're living in that time. I believe that with all my heart. That's why if we don't give up and we don't quit, we don't give up, we don't give in, we don't quit, amen, we're going to see the things of God manifested that's been promised to us. Amen. 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 And we've had, a, we've, had some, uh, we've had a lot of stuff. I've had a lot of words, praise God, given to us that some we've seen come to pass. But I've seen a lot of things. And I mean, I've had a lot of things spoken over me, praise God, that I would see come to pass. And, and, and how I did it, I take that down by faith and I begin to build on that. Now, just like uh, uh, Pastor Phyllis said this morning in, in, in the Bible study, praise God, there's things we have to judge. There's things that, that I've had people speak things over me that I, I just, you know, sorry they missed it. How did I not miss it? Because they didn't bear witness with me. Amen. He didn't bear witness with me, and so you know, I just, I just, uh, you know, let him go. On, praise God. It don't mean they're a, it don't mean they're a false prophet or, or, or nothing like that. This is, now there are people that are false prophets. I think we ought to take. I forgot who it was that said it. They said, you know, if we go back to the days uh, of the Bible, uh, we we'd find out who was who was really a prophet and, and who wasn't, because you know. The there wasn't no such thing as missing it. If you missed it, you were stoned. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. So if you missed it, you were stoned, praise God. Now, along those lines, when a prophetic utterance comes first, and, and it was, it's just like uh, she said, Dr. Hagen said a lot of times, it's really a prophecy, something God's already told you, and He's told, He's, he's trying to tell you, or he's tried to tell you, well, before you got the prophetic word, it's things that God has tried to tell you and tried to tell you and tried to tell you and finally has to use somebody else to slap you with. So a prophetic word, and I don't know how I'm on this, but a prophetic word is always something you already know inside. Amen? Praise God. It will bear witness with you. And, and uh, sometimes the things that's bear witness with me wasn't so good that it was something I already knew. I just tried to avoid it. <laughs> but then when a prophetic word, hey, straighten this out, you know, whatever. You know, yes, sir. Okay. Now, now, now you tell me through somebody else. But a prophetic word is something you're already going to know. Amen. It's not something out of the sky. Well, I didn't know that was going to happen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Can I tell you this? Whenever, whenever uh, it was being spoken over us about uh, uh, pastoring and things like that, uh, guess what that was? Something I already knew. You know, I didn't want to do it, <laughs> especially growing up. I didn't. I, I knew from a. I knew from a time. Uh, I knew from a time I was born. I mean, you know, of course, growing up. But six, seven years old, I knew I was going to be a minister. All right, and I grew up in a denominational church that, that that don't teach things like that. But but I knew growing up I was going to be a minister. I didn't want to be one. And that was the problem. I didn't want to be a minister, let alone be a pastor one day, praise God. But then as I began to grow, as, as you know, as time passed on and we got in a good uh, word church, praise God, teach us the word, we began to understand some things. Well, then we began to understand God's calling us in to, in, in to be a pastor. And so uh, and so what happens? He back, he'll begin to back his word up with prophetic utterances and and you'll begin you'll begin to see God showing you hey I've called you to this I knew who you were going to be while you was in your mother's womb praise God you know I've told you the story uh, and I'm not a, I'm not a mama called daddy sin I'm a father sin but from my heavenly father but you know when I was but mom wasn't allowed to have children. She wasn't supposed to have kids due to an accident she had. And my mother wasn't allowed to have kids. And um, and so she uh, she just began. She got older and, and got married to dad. And, and uh, 
I said, I smell like one of them little foster kids. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but she got married and, and, uh, and uh, got, she began to desire children. And uh, due to uh, an accident she had when she was a teenager, the doctor said, you'll never have children. Now, I want to show you God's grace. Because mom and dad was going to a church that didn't believe in healing, that didn't believe in, in uh, you know, the miraculous, didn't believe in miracles. And so, uh, but mom began to pray. And uh, she began to pray just like, uh, uh, what was her name? I thought began to pray for, for a son. Yeah. Hannah, yeah. Began to pray for a son. Or if you just give me a son, I'll give him back to you. And that's what mom began to pray. Lord, if you'll just give me a son, I'll give him back to you. Well, now, she never told me none of this stuff growing up. So I never knew this until the day I announced my call to preach. And, uh, I mean, I'm talking about as a teenager, she'd always, she, all she, she would do is, God's got something big for you, son. God's got something big for you. That's all she'd ever tell me. And uh, she goes, one day I'll tell you. And so... She goes, but I can't tell you. God has to tell you. Well, man, I didn't want anything to do with none of this junk. I didn't want anything to do with them, you know, preaching and all this stuff. Now, I told you that when I was a kid, I'd go out and I'd act like I was preaching. I'd be six, seven years old, and I'd stand in front of our air conditioner or give that sound off like you're, you know, like you're in a tent or something. I'd preach to the air conditioner. <laughs> and, uh, you know, but the only thing I did know was John 3, 16. That's, that's about it, you know. But I tell everybody they're going to hell. I tell the dogs they're going to hell and the cats and everything else are all going to hell. That's all I knew was hell. Because that's what I was taught. You're going to hell, going to hell, going to hell, going to hell, going to hell. That's all I was ever taught. And so, sure enough, praise God. Hallelujah, you're going to hell. <laughs> so, I tell everybody they're going to hell. And, uh, if I didn't want to be no preacher, I just did it for fun. And I told you about, you know, in my in my life as a, you know, when I was out on drugs and alcohol, I'd mimic, you know, ministers and I'd mimic the gospel and, you know, I, I, I'd be I'd be drunk and acting like I was preaching and all this stuff. Well, little did I know that God this whole time had His hand on me. Praise God. Well, then we get in a, well, finally one day I just break down. And I said, God, if He called me to preach, then 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 I was sitting out there in the, in, in Carrie's mom and dad's field. And uh, it was cloudy. And I said, God, if you called me to preach, I said, just show me a sign. You know, one of these kind of things. Lord, just show me a star in the sky. Because it was cloudy. So it had to be God if I was going to see a star in the sky. So I threw that out there, and I'm just sitting there feeling sorry for myself. And I said, God, just have to be a star in the sky. Well, I had my head down, and I was praying this. And I look up, and the whole clouds have moved back. It was nothing but stars, you know. Praise God. So I had my answer on that. So I knew I was called to preach. Well, I knew I was called to preach. And I called my mom up, you know, told her, well, she starts glory, hallelujah, and all this stuff, you know. And, and uh, try to make the long story short. So she's glory and hallelujah and praising God. And, and uh, she said, son, that's what I wasn't, I had to let God tell you. She goes, but God told me when you was conceived that you was going to, was going to be a preacher. And he's going to preach to the world. And I said, well, hallelujah. Praise God. So, you know. So that was my first confirmation. And then, and then of course, through the years, we've got all these confirmations, you know. Glory to God. And uh, thank you, Jesus. So, take, why, why, am I, why am I trying to say here? I built on that. I went back. When I, when I, I went back whenever I got into doubt Whenever I've got into to um, when I've got into over into unbelief, I go back to those things. I go back to those things, and I see where God has been building and building and building and building over these years. Praise God! Over the years that He's called us, I go back and I look at all the words that He's spoken over River of Life of Faith, and, and I go back and I look at the scriptures. Praise God! Uh, that's why, Amen. What am I doing? I, when I go back and I read those things, that's how I'm building my faith. So my faith growing, amen. That's why I got to do like Brother Copeland and, and Pastor George Pearson was talking about. When I get up here, amen, well, the, 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 I must be in, we already told you we would, we would always be transparent, right? So, <laughs> so 
So when I get up here and it looks like this, guess what wants to come in? Doubt. Well, God, this would surely be working. If I was really called, this would surely be working, right? It is working. Amen. 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 It is working. Well, then, then, then there's this. There's things that happen as you're learning. There's things that happen. You know, this place will be packed out, and and then uh, and then because uh, we were at one point was going, okay, we're out of room now. Mm -hmm. well, you, well, guess what? We're still out of room. Amen. <laughs> I'm not looking at numbers, praise God. Amen. I'm looking at what I'm called to do. Amen. Praise God. And so he said, Pastor Copeland and, 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 uh, and uh, Pastor George said, you ministers, quit looking at your numbers. Number one, thinking that's your source in the first place. That's not your source. God is your source. Praise God. Quit thinking you don't have a ministry just because you... And I, and I look at other, uh, other, other great men of God and hallelujah. Now they have more people than we do. But I, I look at their buildings and there's, there's some ministers that Carrie and I know. And y'all listen, listen to them and sat under them. And uh, I go, wow. You know, now we got you know 100 people. Or, and I'm like, man, these are great men of faith. And then you find out all over the city, and they may be a little bit bigger than us, but all over the city, all over the Chattanooga area, churches are declining. People aren't going to church anymore. And I'm like, why? You know, what? we're in the last days, folks. People are falling away. Now, guess what? There is, there is a revival. Why? God's promised it. That's right. That in the last days, He's going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there is a great falling away, the Bible talks about. People, people are, are declining. And, and I heard something, I read, a, I read a report the other day, and uh, I read a report the other day, through uh, uh, leadership.com, something like that. I can't remember which one it was. But it was a poll. It was a, it was a new poll taken that they took between 18-year-olds uh, uh, and 30-year-olds. I think it was uh, 18 and 30-year-olds. And the question was, was uh, put forth uh, in this poll that when you go to church, what are you looking for? To 18 to 30-year-olds. When we go to church, what are you looking for? Now, we've been this phase. We've been this phase with, a, with, a, with a, the flashing lights, the vinyl machines, and the rock concert feel and all that. And uh, that was not the answer. After the poll was taken, they're not looking for a rock and roll concert feel. They're looking for a place that feels like home. This is between 18 year olds and 30 year olds. New Pope, just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. When we walk into a building, we want it to feel like home. We want it to feel like family. Mm -hmm. We don't want to feel like a number. Now, do you still have the? Do you still have all that stuff? Of course, yeah. But we've got to start making our home. We've got to start making this church feel like a place where people want to come. Amen. Amen. And, and, and I'm determined to do that. I'm determined for us to go by what we say we are. River of Life is a place where love abides. Amen. Amen. A place where love abides. Now, guess what? The, 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 the enemy has paid us visits here. <laughs> we all know that. Praise God. The enemy's paid us visits here. There's been strife come in. And, and, and there's people that's got over the strife that's moved on. And I said this last week. Amen. Uh, uh, there's some people that hasn't moved on. Still hanging on to it. But other people's moved on. Amen. And, and going, on, going on with the Lord. And going on with their ministry that God's called them to do. Praise God. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, it's in the past. It's gone. It's under the blood of Jesus. And they moved on. And other people hang on that. Well, unfortunately... Those people that are hanging on 
aren't going to move forward. Those are the people that are still sitting at home, hanging on, your hanging on to it, trying to take it to another church, and they're just carrying it right in with them. Amen? Mm -hmm. But I said all that to say this, going back to building on our faith. That's why I've got to get all that, push all that out. And begin to, to begin to build on what God has called us to do. And uh, a lot of times we forget that vision. A lot of times in, in, in here, here soon, I don't know when, we're going to go back and teach the vision again, what we're called to do here in this city. Amen? Because mm -hmm. we allow circumstances, we allow things, we allow uh, murmurings, and we get into murmuring, we get into complaining. And, and, and we forget the vision. What, what it is, it's the enemy trying to make you forget the vision. Right. It's the enemy trying to make you forget what you've been called to do. Mm -hmm. and, and can I tell you this? You think he works on, well, we're the number one, we're the number one people he works on first. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He don't work on his own. So guess what? The enemy tries to come to care and I discourage us. Amen. But all we got, what we've got to do is keep speaking our faith. Keep speaking what God has said, thus said the Lord. And what? Build on our faith. Building ourselves up. How how we do that? By praying in the Holy Ghost. That's right. Building our building ourselves up. How, how do you do that? How do you build yourself up? By praying in the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And so that's what Paul is saying here in, in uh, Thessalonians. He's saying, we're bound to thank God always for you, brethren. As it is me, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all towards each other aboundeth. Praise God. That's your love. That is so not only is your faith increasing, not only is your faith exceeding, praise God, but also the love that you have towards one another. Praise God. And that's what I want in, in, in River of Life of Faith. Praise God. Is that people see the love that we have toward one another? Well, if you're guess what? If you're if you're declaring, and pastors always said, you know, pastors always said this. It's not a negative comment. It's not a negative comment. What you're saying when you understand what you're saying? That river of life, the anointing that's on the river of life in, in general, in whole, us being a, a sister part of the home church river of life, the anointing that's on river of life. The enemy is after to shut that down. And so uh, that, that's why things start, you know, you'll see things start happening. Within, so, well, the anointing, the anointing at River of Life is this, like Pastor said. You'll either stay, jump in, or you'll leave. The warfare. He's talking about the warfare, right? Well, let me rephrase that. He said the warfare that's on River of Life because of what he's called us to do. And what we're called to do, what we're called to do in Chattanooga, what we're called to do here in Lafayette, what we're called to do in Trenton, the warfare is so great, amen, that the enemy, amen, well, the, the warfare is so great that you'll either stay or you'll leave. And so we've seen over the years a lot of people chose to leave, <laughs> amen, because the fire got too hot, praise God. So here and I have been through this, we understand what it's like. For the fire to be hot. We understand what it's like for, for, for I mean, negative, negative comments. People talking about you behind your back. Uh, 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 people stabbing you in the back. People, I'm talking about, you know, the river of life in general. People, people stabbing you in the back. Pe people, uh, you know, smiling in your face one, one second and then stabbing you in the back when you turn around. So we understand that. And we understand the we understand the warfare that, that that's in that. Praise God! Wow, we I told you we've been trained. Praise God! <laughs> we've been trained in some things. Glory to God! And so, well, when we face something, we went through things. So when we come to it, we face it. We know how to handle it. Praise God! And other people may not understand that's how you handle. It, but we, we understand how to handle some things. Praise God! There's things we're learning how to handle. Glory to God! Some new things that we're learning how to handle. Well, we understand those things. We understand that 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 uh, you know people are going to come, people are going to go. Amen. This is a free will church. Amen. You, 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 nobody's got a gun in nobody's head. 
Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, so uh, we've seen people. We've seen people come in. We've seen people leave. Amen. And uh, why the, the warfare is tough here? The warfare is tough here. That's why God has a God has such a great work in this city. And uh, if, if, if if we can ever just get that across to everybody, you'd understand. The people of this city would understand. Amen. And. Uh, so I'm not going to be. I'm not going to get in fear. I'm not going to get. In, I'm not going to get in doubt. I'm not going to get in unbelief. I'm not going to get discouraged. But I'm going to stay in courage. Praise God. Hallelujah. For what He's called us to do. So I'm watching here, just as Paul said in Thessalonians. I'm watching our faith grow. Praise God. The ones that are here. <laughs> I'm watching faith grow. Hallelujah. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, I hope she don't get mad at me. Amen. When I say this. But Stacy's always our example. <laughs> I love watching Stacy grow. Amen. From the first time she walked in, started coming here to where she is now. Amen. And the miracles that, that God. Will you share what you was, we were sharing the other day about how you've seen God working in her life? And, and you got you got to talk on the microphone. You don't remember it? Well, how God set everything up for for her. How we watched it was a God thing. Everything that she's went through and, and how but God. You say all of that or not? That's up to you. Be led by the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Well, let me say, let me say something. See, I, I, I even put my wife on the spot. Right. Don't get mad at me, Stacy boy. <laughs> but it's true. What I really said, and I don't know if you heard this part, was be watching out <laughs> because I really believe that that guy that Stacy's been looking for is around the corner. Is, is that what you wanted me to say? Well, I'm not going to say that part. You done said it. You done said it. You done said it. We're saying everything from her schooling to getting hired on. How was that? This time God has really moved. And, and I, you know, you remember all the prophetic words that's been spoken okay, over her by yeah. more than even. I mean, because only God could put together, you know, the book showing up for free. The, you know, somebody walking in and saying, Being Here's the your job. Class. Yeah. And here's your job. You know, come. I'm here. Here it is, and and I even believe that was part of the, the prophecy, wasn't? Although I don't remember all of them, that you know they were going to be coming to her. But um, so you know, part of all this is the guys on the way. <laughs> so that's what we were talking about. Just, yeah. I mean, I believe that there were things that you know Stacy had to work through, and when she got to that point, you know, when you got to that point, you know, bam, bam, bam. When we get to that point in our faith where we're supposed to be, and then bam, 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 Amen. we're going to see things start, you know, lining up the way that they should be. And I believe the next thing that was going to line up was the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I told her the same thing as two. <laughs> okay, there's all them confirmations, Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. Let's <laughs> <laughs> say we love. See, when, when we're at home and we're talking about people, <laughs> we do talk about people. But guess what? It ain't negative, amen? That's right. We're talking about the good. We're talking about what God's doing in people's lives and how we're excited. And uh, it just thrills me whenever we see what's happening in, in, in Stacy's life, praise amen. God. And I said, you know, I, actually I told Carrie, I said, you know, I said it was almost similar to what happened to me. Um, when, I, when I went to... Uh, when I got called at Memorial, uh, I didn't go to uh, I didn't even I didn't even go to school yet. They said, "Oh, just go ahead and come on and start working. We'll teach you here." And I was like, "Really?" <laughs> and it was just I mean, God set it up for me when He set me up when I worked for Memorial. He set me up. I wasn't there not long before I knew it. I had people that had already been working there before me coming to me asking me questions about how to do something. Because I just supernaturally began to, to learn 
and, and, and see things. And, and I believe that's what's happening in your life. And I said, uh, I said it was it's so funny whenever they, I mean, and, and then I wasn't, how long was I there? Maybe a year? And the opportunity come for a promotion for me to, to move in uh, out of Central Stair. And uh, that's when I had to take some school. But, uh, Praise God, I, I was, but I, I got moved out there into, into, into OR materials and started working in surgery. And, and uh, I mean, praise God. I mean, God just started opening doors for me left and right. Hallelujah. And uh, and so I, I loved it. I love what God, so so look, we are a church that's blessed here. We are a church that, that, that God, people are going to see it. That's why we confess that. Amen. People are going to see that we're blessed. And look around. That's what happens. People are going to look around and see that we are blessed. That we're blessed people. Hey, how's this happen to you? How come this is always happening for you? Why? Because we're blessed. Amen. And, and we're doing what the Word of God says. Praise God. I want to get to this one point. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time here. But um, I want to get to this one point. Not only does our faith grow, but look at uh, John chapter 6. John chapter 6. And this is just something that's just a little side note I want to take. But this is how God began to show the disciples about their faith. And uh, it's about feeding the 5,000. John chapter 6. And I'm going to start in verse 5. John chapter 6 verse 5. It says... Uh, when Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And so what was Jesus doing here? Jesus is about to do some faith testing here. Jesus is about to do some faith testing here. Praise God. And he says, uh, he says and he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Notice what Jesus said there. Jesus said, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And, and uh, this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered said, 200 penny worths of bread is not sufficient for them. And every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which, had, which uh, has uh, five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are these among so many? What are these among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Praise God. Now, these was much, there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, and, and the other, the other uh, uh, books in the Bible, Matthew and uh, Matthew and Luke only says that he took the bread and he looked up. What was he doing? Looking to his source. Praise God. Amen. Looking to the source. Amen. He looked up and he gave thanks. He distributed to the disciples. Now after he done this, notice what happens. Jesus takes it and then he begins to distribute to the disciples for what? The disciples to distribute out. And, says, uh, and the disciples... And he distributed to the disciples and the disciples to them that were set down, likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. And when they were all filled, he said to the disciples, Now, here's what you're going to do, boys. He said, Gather up the fragments that remaineth, that nothing be lost. What was he doing here? Well, this, this lad who gave the two loaves and started out with two Brother, fish bro. and five loaves. Yeah. They got to have food for a long time. Amen. And I believe this food, I mean, this is just my, my opinion, but, but if, if this food was going to spoil, Jesus would have took up 12 basket loaves. And I believe he, that family was fed for a very long time. Amen. And it might just, for all we know, it might just supernaturally kept on coming. And watch this, they gathered up the fragments that remaineth that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled, now, now notice here, they filled 12 baskets with fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above them that eateth. Now, now, now notice what happened right here. How many disciples did we have? 
Twelve. How many were unbelief? Twelve. Twelve. All of them. All of them were unbelief. And unbelief, how are we going to feed? They were talking among themselves, not in the other books of the Bible, other, the other uh, books like Matthew and stuff. But all, you know, most, how are we going to feed them? How much money is this going to take? They're worrying, worrying, and worrying, having no faith. But God says, I'm about to build you faith right here, boys. So what happened was 12 baskets were gathered up. Uh, uh, well, guess who carried those baskets to that little boy's house? Twelve. Them 12 disciples had to carry those baskets to the lad's house. Praise God. And, and you don't think that was a faith builder right there? That's right. Amen? He was, he was giving the disciples a, a little lesson in faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. But okay, boys, y'all going to take a basket. That we didn't have enough. Matter of fact, it said in, 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 in a, um, one scripture, I think it, well, it said right there too. Uh, it says the amount. But I looked that amount up, and, and really on them, they, they had about in our in our time, they had about I'm talking about Jesus being poor, they had about eight thousand dollars on them. So they had eight. They had uh, on them at the time. They were they were carrying around eight thousand bucks on them at the time. Now, including what's in the treasury. That's what they had on them. They said, this 8,000 bucks ain't enough to feed me 5,000 people. And so Jesus showed them up, praise God. He broke the, he broke the fish and the bread, amen. They carried 12 baskets back, hallelujah. More than enough. Our God is more than enough. How did he get to that point? He looked up and he blessed and looked to God as his source. Praise God. Amen. He looked to God as his source. That's who we look to today. We can't pray for you to have more faith. We said this last week. Can't pray for you to have more faith. All you can do is build on your faith. Amen. Amen. You have to do something. Praise God. Right. Hallelujah. So, with that being said, did y'all get anything out of today? Amen. Now, we Amen. went here and there. We went, we went different places. But how do we live by the Holy Ghost? Amen. Amen. Did you have anything else? Okay.